Hello everyone and welcome to Compassion Immersion Coaching. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about emotional healing on demand versus waiting to be triggered. So first of all, what do I mean by emotional healing on demand versus emotional healing waiting until you're actually triggered to do the healing? So it was after my main spiritual awakening in 2014, I knew from studying the works of people such as Dolores Cannon that looking into my karmic emotions was the one thing that was really going to help me advance and move past my limitations in this realm, in this world, at this time, in this life. I knew that if I wanted to get off the karmic wheel of repeating the same old patterns in my life, the same old life lessons, the same old traumas that have been repeating for lifetime after lifetime, I had to make myself lighter emotionally, but I didn't really get a chance or I didn't really go deep into making myself lighter emotionally for quite some time. This was because I was distracted from doing so, from distracted from looking into my childhood wounds and my childhood traumas that didn't seem so obvious to me at the time. I didn't really consider them as traumas, like particularly issues with my dad and him being quite domineering and angry in many ways towards me and my sister. I kind of shrugged it off and felt that that was normal. Didn't really consider it a trauma. So I got distracted as well by other perspectives, learning other perspectives from such as from channeling sessions that I had had and from spiritual teachers and things like that. And one that always stuck with me for quite a while, it didn't always stick with me, but it stuck with me, was you don't need to go looking for trouble. All you have to do is live your life and the triggers will come. You don't need to go looking for trouble. All you have to do is live your life and the triggers will come. Which later I indeed found to be true. I did get triggered in around about 2018. I did heal many layers and it definitely helped. Like getting the triggers that I needed, they certainly came. Just like this message had said. But there was that whole period there of 2014 to 2018 where I kind of first had the nudge that I needed to be doing emotional inner work, but I didn't really ever go deep and I never really got triggered enough to, to actually do any kind of real emotional healing at that time. So yeah, when I started getting triggered in around about 2018, when I was just waiting for those triggers to happen, I did notice the difference. I noticed that working through those triggers and using the tools I had at the time, I noticed that I felt lighter, especially at the end of that dark night of the soul period. It took, yeah, it good, took a good two to three years for me to get through that. And I started to enjoy the benefits. I generally felt happier and more content within myself and in my experiences of the world and within myself and of my life. As more of these layers dissolved over time, it definitely made a difference. Yet there were still depths that I just could have looked more deeply into. During my time, 2014 to 2018, when I wasn't really being triggered, there definitely was more room for me to take the ball by the horns and just go into that darkness and light it up a bit more. But yeah, it's amazing how a perspective can throw you off like that. Just one outside perspective. And really, the spiritual journey is an individual journey. It's not like religion, where everyone's kind of like a sheep in a box together, all, all singing off of the same hymn sheet. For those that walk that particular style of path. Spirituality is a much more individual journey. It's one where you find your own power within yourself, your own, your own empowerment within your sovereign path. And so, yeah, there were still depths that I could have looked into more deeply during those years, had I consciously done so. Had I not given authority to this learned perspective of 
wait for the triggers to come. Yeah, just wait for the triggers to come. Had I not waited, I could have lifted more of this weight sooner, this emotional weight, this karmic weight. And in hindsight, it doesn't really matter because I am here now. I'm much more content than I was nine years ago at the time of recording in mid-2020-2023. But looking back with the tools I've learned since then, since 2014 and even 2018, <clears throat> I know that there is now a better way. I know that better for me at least and better for many people that are tired the people that are tired of feeling trapped by their ever elusive inner world that at times can feel like it's impossible for improvement to happen i know there's a better way you don't have to just wait for the triggers to come for these deep meaningful shifts to occur due to the introduction of compassion and i'll get onto that in a bit so if there are two primary paths that most individuals will align with, let's take one. A, one can wait for life to bring the triggers and advance themselves, so long as they're doing the emotional inner work when they get triggered and not just burying it down or numbing themselves. Or B, one can consciously look into their shadow and transmute it with love and compassion and thus advance themselves a bit quicker while still waiting for life to bring the inevitable triggers. So in scenario A, one's just waiting for relationships and other, other circumstances to happen before they start doing that emotional healing, which is fine. It's a valid path. And also then scenario B, where we're looking into that shadow, we're looking into our childhood wounds we're looking into those emotions that are kind of always dormant and we very rarely see them or feel them, but they're still there within us. They're still in, in our bodies. But then we're actually looking to bring love into those parts of ourselves and, and advance ourselves a bit quicker rather than just waiting around for our life path to do it for us. Now, both paths are valid and it's fine to do it both ways. If you're on the path of spiritual advancement and and lightening your load karmically and emotionally, then yeah, life is gonna bring you what you need. But I feel what I'm getting at here is, why wait? If there's already some parts of you that are niggling and don't feel very good, you don't feel very good in yourself, why wait? Why not just work on those parts now and things will get better quicker instead of just waiting years potentially for you to get into that relationship that triggers you or for you to do that kind of try and push yourself into that kind of work that pushes you beyond your comfort zone and triggers you as well or or you have some kind of health scare from some kind of emotion that's been niggling around in your body for quite a few years so my question to someone pondering this dilemma between path a and path b would be if you feel like if you feel like you'd like to feel lighter in yourself now, why wait for life to bring those triggers to you? Personally, I wouldn't want to turn back the clock, my own like personal journey of life so far, because I honor the path of my soul. I fully acknowledge that everything I experience is what my soul wants me to experience or what my soul needs me to experience, what the soul needs to experience for the sake of the oversoul, for the sake of God, and whatever other aspects you want to bring into that. So I wouldn't want to turn back the clock personally. But if I could, if I had that opportunity and I wanted to, I'd be wrapping my inner child in so much more love than I did between that time of 2014 and 2018. I'd be using the tools that I've already learned today at this time and recently and just bringing myself to a much more lighter state. In some ways you could call it enlightened because you think about that. You've got emotional weight that's holding you down. You can enlighten your load. So I'm not saying that I am enlightened, but I am definitely more emotionally enlightened <laughs> or karmically enlightened than I was nine years ago. <laughs> Yeah, so from that, I can only imagine where I would be today. 
Like I've already, like I said, I feel better in myself now than I ever have done. And maybe, you know, you could just say that's naturally the progression of aging and growing older and growing up and coming into more of myself and who I am. But yeah, no, I, I'm confident that if I have not worked through the emotions I have in the past six, seven years, I'd be a shell of the person I am today, by far. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be struggling. So, yeah, I wouldn't change it. Even though I often feel like I should be further along in my life than I am, but that's just, that's just a part of my nature at this point, and I accept that. Anyway, I digress. So, because I can't turn back my own clock, the next best thing now is I can help other people to embody a lighter version of themselves. And so, that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm recording this video now, and it's going to be one of quite a few series. So, yeah, that's what I'd like to share. That's the core message. So, in summary, yes, you can just wait for life to trigger you. And then heal your emotions when the triggers arise. Or you can take action and look into your past, into your childhood, and use certain techniques to bring love and compassion into those younger versions of you, using essentially forms of timeline therapy, compassion-focused therapy, and completely change the timeline, or completely change the version of you are now, and feel the ripple effect and the benefits of doing all of that juicy work that is painful, it is scary, sure, but the payoff is insurmountable. And those of you that are doing that work, you know what I'm talking about. And those of you that are just getting started on this, you've got some really nice things, really nice experiences to come. So I wish you all the very best on your healing journey. And just for those who need some more help with this kind of thing, with healing their emotional states and with dealing with their childhood wounds and their traumas and bringing more love into their inner child so they can experience a lighter and brighter version of themselves. For a limited time, I'm offering a special free 30-minute compassion immersion strategy session. Oh, what a, what a tongue twister. To help you navigate the remainder of 2023 and future years as the most emotionally and karmically unburdened version of yourself. During the strategy session, we will construct a lucid vision for your optimal well-being, emotional stability, and emotional freedom. We'll reveal concealed obstacles that may be thwarting your capability to heal yourself. You'll conclude the session feeling revived, energized, and motivated to dissolve deeper parts of your karmic baggage so you can look forward to the upward spiraling benefits that result from such action. If you'd like to take advantage of this special session, message me or comment down below and answer these five questions. One, what are the most pressing karmic patterns or emotional health issues you're eager to overcome now? And two, for how long have you been enduring these challenges? And three, on a scale of zero to 10, how vital is it that you get on top of these challenges once and for all? And four, what well, have you tr already tried to resolve these issues and how did that work out for you? And five, your full name and best phone number or email to reach you on to schedule your session. To actually send that information, please go to my website, zachhater.com forward slash contact and email me that information there instead. Don't leave any sensitive information on a YouTube video or anywhere else publicly online. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, message me and answer those five questions above and I'll get back to you within the next 24 to 48 hours to schedule your one-to-one -one compassion immersion strategy session. Message me now to claim your session today. Zach, compassion immersion hater. Yes, I'm just reading from the script. Let's stop doing that. It was a pleasure. And this is the first of many videos to come. I'm really glad that I did this video today. I'm sure it's going to help someone. It's helped me. And I'm very grateful to be able to share this. So, wishing you all a great day. And a really good week ahead. 
Zach compassion immersion hater, bubbling the love up in his heart to wash all of his emotions away and showing others and helping others to do the same so they can live a better quality of life. Mm. That's nice. That's warm. Anyway, peace out. Much love.